Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be, I think it's going to be quick, but I don't know when I say quick and then I get talking, I'm not sure, but <laughs> this is going to be a video about the 2022 Scorpio new moon solar eclipse that is coming up the 24th, 25th, depending on your time zone. But we're going to be feeling that for more than just like that day, right? This is going to last at least a week, like a, a few days before the eclipse and a few days after the eclipse, at least. I'm definitely already feeling the vibes. Um, it's interesting. We were already kind of put into a, almost like a little bit of an assist, an assist going into the Scorpio energy because the sun and Venus both made a square to Pluto. So I've already been cleaning out my closet, literally. I noticed that I do that um, every time there's some kind of a thing with Pluto or some kind of Scorpio thing going on. We, <laughs> I clean out my closet and that is really, you know, the, the most basic thing of all of this Scorpio energy, especially a Scorpio eclipse. It's a purge, right? It's a purge and a cleansing and a clearing. Um, and it's funny, I ac actually even like six months ago, I just scheduled a random dentist appointment and it turns out that I scheduled it for the day of the eclipse. <laughs> so, you know, that's, I'm going in to get my teeth cleaned and I'm going to be getting, we're all getting cleaned. We're all getting cleaned out. <laughs> And if you want to think back to six months ago when we had the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse, and that was the most intense purifying experience that we like all had, right? I talked to so many people and they were like, wow, I am completely brand new. I'm completely cleaned out. It kind of sucked, but here I am. Wow, it's so good to be on the, on the other side of this. Um, so far, I'm feeling that since it's like since we already did that, like the really serious stuff, um, six months ago, I feel like this is going to be a little bit gentler. I also f typically find solar eclipses to be more exhausting. Like on a physical level, I find they exhaust my body. Like really, like I don't want to do anything for like a couple of days. Really, 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 really tired. But I find that they are less emotionally turbulent, right? The, the full moon lunar eclipses are typically more emotionally turbulent for me. So, I mean, that's just me. You, your experience could vary, but I am hoping that this lunar, that this solar eclipse, the solar eclipse will be less, um, you know, less emotional, still going to be emotional, but hopefully a little bit less emotional. <laughs> so I'm just want to get some cards to just, I don't know what, what should we know? Anything, anything to know, anything to, to expect, anything to feel into, other than your basic purging and, and clearing and getting rid of stuff. <laughs> and and um, also a huge theme of no more listening to the voices, right? No more listening to the voices. We are all done listening to the voices. And this can be the voices of others, the voices in the media, the voices of your friends and family, the voices uh, like anybody who's telling you anything about what to do. You're no longer going to be listening to those voices. You're going to be letting them go. For a lot of us, this is also like no more listening to the voices inside your head, right? All of those, those thoughts that you have inside of your head that are always telling you very unhelpful things, no more listening to that either. It's like, it's all gotta go. It's all gotta go. So there's a big potential here to really up level your sense of cosmic sovereignty. I'm sorry if you can hear my husband screaming in the background. I didn't tell him I was gonna turn the camera on. I just, I did, did this very impromptu. He's playing a game. He gets very excited. <laughs> this is Queen of Pentacles, first one out. Four of Cups, Eight of Swords, <laughs> what is this one? Oh, this is the sun. This is the sun, guys. <laughs> Literally, we got the sun card for a solar eclipse, right? This is essentially conf confirming what I was saying. You got the Queen of Pentacles reclaiming your sense of sovereignty, right? In the kind of, I didn't, you know, this could be the past. I could interpret this way based on how I put the cards out. The Four of Cups, right? Those feelings of sulkiness, those feelings of everything being kind of boring, dissatisfaction, right? The Four of Cups is, is not really that, it's not that bad, but it's also just like really blah, right? Really, really blah. Um, I've actually been kind of feeling like this lately. 
it, it's like again I've been feel I've been doing well everything's been good but I've been feeling kind of blah just kind of not interested in things like food hasn't tasted as good I've just been kind of less things have been kind of boring <laughs> it's just been a little blah right things have been a little gray and I mean look we got everything everything is gray on this table right now <laughs> so that is going to be shifting out after the you know we're and we're going to be shifting into Scorpio season and then you know the the eclipse is happening within the first couple of days of Scorpio season because it's happening at two degrees in Scorpio. So if anybody has any Scorpio placements at like zero, one, two, three, four, five degrees, this is going to be really affecting you, <laughs> really, really affecting you. Um, anyway, so things are going to get much more emotionally satisfying after the eclipse, right? After the eclipse, because Scorpio energy brings that e emotionality back into the picture. And, you know, in the near future, the Eight of Swords over here, which is exactly what I was saying about freeing yourself from those, the, the, the voices of others, freeing yourself from all those thoughts in your head, freeing yourself from all those limiting beliefs. This is something I have been really practicing. I mean, this always comes around and goes around in a spiral, right? But for me, it's been like, Wow, when I stop listening to my own thoughts, it's amazing what I can accomplish. When I stop listening to my own thoughts, it's amazing what I can do. So I just always tell myself, don't think, just do. Don't think, just do. Don't think, just do. I tell myself over and over and over again. And this is, I think, really important and like really cool that this is coming up for us in Scorpio season because I used to really struggle with Scorpio season like really amazingly long before I ever knew about astrology. I used to call Scorpio season Novemberitis, right? Because I knew by the end of October and then all through November, I would feel horrible, just horribly depressed, super emotional, just crying and bawling and, and drinking and like completely overwhelmed by, by my emotions and like my thoughts would just be attacking me, right? I would be under attack by my own mind. Now I know that's Scorpio season. Um, but I think that, I mean, those of us in the vortex of this video, right, all of us here, we really are transcending that. We're really leaving that behind because we're freeing ourselves from all of these thoughts, all of these voices. We're freeing ourselves from that. We're no longer in the cage of the mind, no longer in the cage of the mind. Um, and that really allows us to experience the higher frequencies of Scorpio, the higher frequencies of Scorpio, because all of the, all of that feeling under attack, feeling depressed, feeling emotional, feeling overwhelmed, um, all, all of that, that is the very, very low frequencies of Scorpio. So we're actually getting up into the higher frequencies of Scorpio. And it is really, um, fan, like fantastic to get the queen, of, the queen of Pentacles in the sun here, guys. Oh my God, this is reclaiming your sovereignty. And it's, and it's not just even reclaiming your sovereignty. You know, sometimes you can feel sovereign on like a, when you're alone in your house, or maybe when you're alone walking down the street or on a spiritual level, but with the queen of pentacles, this is really your physical sovereignty. And with the sun guys, <laughs> like this, my, the sun is my all time favorite card to draw out of all of the good cards in the tarot. Nothing is more awesome than the sun card because I just, uh, like, I have personal experiences with all of the tarot cards I, I have developed over the years, like a relationship with them. And, and when I see the sun card come out, I know that I can expect good news. I can expect some kind of, like, money showing up, right? Or a job offer or some kind of opportunity. It's always something different. or But there's always some kind of beautiful manifestation, some kind of beautiful gift, and it always materializes in the physical. And so this is really cool because you know, it's going to be the Scorpio new moon. And when the Scorpio new moon is a solar eclipse, I mean, that's how you get a solar eclipse, right? Solar eclipses always happen on the new moon. Um, uh, what I'm, what I'm trying to, 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 what I'm trying to say is that during a solar eclipse, the solar energy is weakened, right? Cause it's, uh, if you've ever seen a solar eclipse, I got to see a one, like one full solar eclipse. It was incredible. The stars came out during the day, right? For a couple of minutes there. When you really see, the moon go in front of the sun and the light goes out, <laughs> right? That is the weakening of the solar energy. So, <sighs> so my cat came and I lost my train of thought, but isn't he sunny, right? He brings the sun and trying to eat me alive. Yep. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kitten. Okay, Mr. Kitten. He's only six months old. He is very, <laughs> very playful. Okay. What was I trying to say about the solar energy being weakened and that having something to do with this message here? 
the solar energy in Scorpio season is being weakened, but that it's literally like restarting your phone. This is a massive reset, a massive refresh, a mass massive reboot, a restart. And, but like specifically to your Scorpio energy. So those of you with Scorpio placements, this is gonna affect you more. Um, but it, this of course really affects everybody, right? You don't have to, even if you have no Scorpio energy, it doesn't matter, this is affecting everybody. But so your relationship to all of those Scorpionic things, your relationship to fear, to the unknown, to things that you have bit, that that you have repressed, right? Scorpio in the eighth house really represents things that you yourself have repressed, repressed emotions, um, like issues with money. Scorpio's eighth house is also like other people's money, like legacy money, like usually like issues with money, right? Issues with money. Um, sex, lots to do with sex, um, lots to do with anything. Uh, like occult things, but specifically for us, I think it's more like past life trauma where either we ourselves used our spiritual gifts in ways that weren't really good for anybody or others, we were victimized by others, right? It could have been either way, but there was like a misuse of spiritual energy, essentially, a misuse of it. Not that anything can ever really be misused, but you know what I mean, right? It's the kind of thing that nobody really wants and you end up traumatized for it <laughs> because of it afterwards. Also, like, emotional volatility, right? Emotional volatility. But the fact that this is all clearing away and we're freeing ourselves from this and we're grounding into this... physical restart of the Scorpio energy for I think that's coming through for us like so you might see people around you those are you know people who don't really who aren't really interested in doing inner work or you know and who don't really have a spiritual practice or anything that you know keeps them evolving right um you might see that some of them, like any anybody you know with repressed emotions, who especially if somebody has been repressing their mo emotions like forever, um, and maybe you might see people like erupting like volcanoes, right? I was gonna say erupting like vampires and that doesn't quite make sense, but maybe that means something to somebody. Um, you might see these emotional eruptions coming from people around you because they're gonna be having a different experience because they have been repressing their emotions. And when, Scorp when like, like some kind of significant Scorpio thing comes through, um, that's when the emotions like erupt, right? That's when they absolutely erupt. Um, but for those of you watching this video, you have been doing doing the inner work, right? You've done the shadow work, you've done the inner work, you've been walking your path, you've been evolving your consciousness, you've been interested in all of this. And so it's it's a different experience for you guys. So for us, it's the experience of the Queen of Pentacles and the Sun. The Queen of Pentacles and the Sun having grounded benevolence grounded benevolence. I don't, I don't know what other, what other word to say for that. And I want to read you the thing in the, this particular book about the sun. It bows before you glistening like shining oil. You climb onto its back and great soft wings carry you up, up above the mist and smoke and doubts. From this height, you see the world anew, where living things sprout and grow out of the concealing shadows, where hearts seek the light. As you fly higher and higher, the light causes your skin to glow with a newfound brilliance. This is who you are, this shining soul held aloft in the darkness. This is a world of opportunities to seek and find great joy. Yeah. Clarity, happiness, find your center, joy, limitless possibility. So that's where we are at for this Scorpio. New moon, solar eclipse. You might see others around you having a different experience, but that's okay. That just means that they're coming along the path behind you and you have made way literally like you know i'm seeing somebody walking in the snow and you are the one who has gone before you are the one who has blazed the trail or like walking through the jungle with a machete you have blazed the trail and there's people behind you walking in your path people behind you walking in your footsteps and it's going to be easier for them to do it but they still do have to walk the path so they might be a little bit farther behind you and but you're entering into a whole new world entering into a whole new world and it's gonna there's going to be material manifestation with this queen of pentacles and the pentacles in the sun right there's going to be a material experience of this um i would i will say this material experience what however it manifests for you right could take 
I mean, I don't give, I, you know, it could be whenever, right? But really, I see this as most likely playing out sometime over the next month, because, like any time in Scorpio season, basically. It's not, it's not like it's going to happen necessarily on the day of the eclipse or something like that. Because, of course, after this eclipse, we're coming up to the Taurus full moon eclipse two weeks, in two weeks after, after, right? <laughs> the moons are two weeks apart. And that's going to be something else entirely. But it, it's, because with the Taurus full moon, it's going to be, a big focus on materialization, right, with the Earth energy, things coming back down to Earth. But we're already seeing that here with the Queen of Pentacles and the Sun. So it's like the story is not quite over yet. It's it's unfinished, and all of Scorpio season is going to be having this play out. This eclipse is just the beginning of it. So I'm going to leave you guys there because I have to play with my kitten. His name is Trouble because we took one look at him and said, yeah, he is Trouble. <laughs> we gotta find you a toy. All right, guys. See you on the other side of the eclipse. Bye.